So I'm going to introduce our instructors for today, um, and maybe they can just wave. Jim Barnes is our public technology services coordinator. He um, oversees all of the public tech at the library. So if you use the computer lab, uh, Jim is in charge of, of those particular functions. Uh, Joel Bonner is our technology assistant in um, Jim's department in the public technology services department. And Joel is an incredible tr troubleshooter and can get you out of almost every tech bind you can come up with. So uh, we're delighted to have him here. And then Kathy Hamilton is our um, famous retirement boot camp drill sergeant and advisor to, to Zoom stars, as you will soon find out. Um, so with that, I will turn it on over to Joel, who will get us started and um, just kind of start down our agenda. I will say we kind of created a, a list, an agenda today based on questions that we've heard from several of you at various programs about, you know, how, how Zoom works and all the tri uh, tricks and um, different things, different approaches to so solving problems. So uh, with that, I will let Joel take it away. All right, hey everyone, thanks for coming out. Um, appreciate you being here. And um, like Kathleen said, we had a, a, a list of requests and questions and um, quandaries that you had submitted. And I kind of went through and picked um, stuff that was, um, you know, more, some more relevant than others. And I tried to do my best to answer as much of it as I could. Um, I, knowing that you all are now on Zoom and you have been meeting with Zoom a bit, I take it that you at least understood how to make your account and get to this point. Um, I, I, I think I'll start just after that where, um, we can kind of talk about what the difference is between the free accounts that Zoom offers that, you know, kind of the vast majority of people use. Um, and then there is a upgrade to a paid service that Zoom offers. Um, and I primarily the difference you want to understand with that is in the free version, you're only going to be able to host up to 100 participants in your session, in your meeting. And that group meeting is capped at 40 minutes. So if it's something that you think will take longer than 40 minutes, if you're wanting to keep it super casual and there's no clock, um, uh, you do have to consider the possibility of upgrading to a paid account um, because the paid account will allow you to have a group meeting for up to 30 hours, um, which is a incredibly casual amount of time. Um, and also uh, in the paid, the, the first, tier of paid accounts, you can have, um, again, up to 100 participants in your meeting, and it does allow you to expand that to 1,000 people in your meeting if you've got a lot of friends. Um, that is a separate service that Zoom offers um, that you just have to activate with your paid account. Um, the paid account will also allow you to stream your meeting to social media services like Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so you can host it from Zoom, and then if you have a YouTube channel or a Facebook page, you can stream that to whomever is connected to you on those channels. That's generally, you know, more for folks who maybe are content creators or they run a business someplace like the library, allows us to um, simultaneously cast the meeting that we're having to other platforms for folks to tune in. So they wouldn't necessarily have to even register a Zoom account in order to uh, at least observe the meeting. Um, moving down the list here, what do we have? So um, I wanted to bring attention to if anyone has questions about how to upgrade your account I'm going to utilize our chat window over here and I'm going to post a link and then I'm also I'm going to investigate and look at the link here so we'll go over it um, but you at least in the chat here will have this so if you want to investigate upgrading your account and what comes with that at a later time uh, zoom support page uh, I have to admit is pretty well laid out and they do a very good job of creating pretty succinct little bits of information for lots of common questions. 
And I did find this one about upgrading and I'm going to cast my screen here if everyone can see that. And where? So this is the page for upgrading your account. Let me zoom in. Big. So I won't go through absolutely 100% of this, but they just lay out um, instructions. So everyone has a free account. Um, all you have to do is sign into Zoom's online page, which is where you would access your account um, if you use the web browser to um, access your account, make changes to your account, uh, navigate to meetings. Um, Zoom does have the standalone um, app, the, the cloud client um, that you also can use on the computer um, to access meetings and your account information. Um, but this specifically asks for you to do this through a web browser like Chrome, Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge, etc. cetera. Um, and then it just gives you the step-by-step -step process of how to upgrade your account. Um, it's hard for me to show you exactly how to do that on my account because I have an account that's administrated through the library, which is already a paid system. Um, so I don't have the options of going through this on my screen explicitly, unfortunately. Um, so that link is there in the chat. Um, and like Kathleen said, when we're done here, um, uh, if anyone has any questions or wants access to that link or uh, any other things, um, we can just get an email correspondence with you and one of us would be happy to forward it or I can forward it to you and answer any questions you may have about that. Um, so moving on, one of the very basic um, core things that is great to know about getting started with Zoom is when you are utilizing the Zoom app, this is kind of, um, it might look a little bit different depending on what device you're on, whether you're on a PC, a Mac, a mobile device, or um, one of the many different devices that Zoom is compatible with. Um, but this is kind of the home page that you'll see every time you open it up when you're not already joining a meeting. And in here, this says to return to a meeting because I'm actively in a meeting already. Um, so I can't create a new one while I'm actively in one. But um, what you would see here, this big orange icon, this is where you would begin any meeting that you would want to put on yourself. Um, which is um, kind of just the absolute bare bones um, jumping off point. Anytime you want to host a meeting that hasn't already been established and someone else hasn't already created um, the, the meeting, uh, this hasn't already scheduled the meeting, such as with Kathleen and the boot camp, um, sending, uh, sending out a meeting code to everybody and then everyone. Yeah. Joel, I have a question. Is I think the, the screen you're sharing is still on how to upgrade your account. Oh, okay. Yeah, can um I just thought we should let me the orange button and I was wondering the same thing. Let's see. I think are you on a meeting setup page? I'm thought I had it set up to just do my entire screen here, but let me adjust here. Uh, well, let me stop this and then. Yeah, and then maybe reshare it. Yep. So, can you see? Yeah, it's, it's still the same upgrade page. Hmm. And when I get rid of it there, it, it just doesn't. And now, now it's like your desktop. Okay, interesting. So, th so the Zoom, uh, the Zoom client doesn't show up in the screencasts then. Oh, weird. Okay. Maybe it just does that so it doesn't uh, uh, create that like mirroring into oblivion effect where it's filming itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but okay, so this is where actually um, my next point then will come in handy. 
Um, like I said, Zoom has a very uh, simply laid out support page that um, we can reference here. Let me get that brought up in the chat. And okay. So in that link, oh, that's not an actual link. Hold on. Sorry about this. There we go. Okay. Oh, maybe I typed that one in wrong. You're taking me to a. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. This one. <laughs> there we go. We we all struggle at tech with tech at different times. Um, so. That is your support link for um, Zoom. And let me get my web browser set back up so you can see it a little more easily. And we can investigate this together. And I will show you a quick clip of exactly what I just talked about <laughs> and wasn't able to successfully show you on my screen. So if we go here and then I go to here and share. So now we have um, the support page. And from the top down, they have um, different categories for different um, levels of users. So um, there's a whole section for owners and administrators. Um, these are generally for people who um, are the administrators of a gigantic paid account for a business such as like the library uses. Um, they have a just everyday users and participators of meetings section um, that would be very helpful for um, any of us uh, in the uh, issues that we may find. Um, then moving down, they have a section of video tutorials um, of kind of just very common um, tasks and questions um, that folks have about how to get started um, joining a meeting, um, how to record the meeting that you're in, and you can hit the little arrows on the left and right to navigate to um, a few other um, groups of videos. And they also have a um, much more comprehensive um, index of support videos that you can watch. And just real quick here, we can take a look at what it is what it takes to join a meeting. Let me uh, adjust this here and pull the volume down so it doesn't blow you away. And they'll describe exactly what I was trying to des describe a moment ago. Is there sound? Oh, there's not sound the whole time. Dang. Yeah. All right. Thought I had my system set up. Well. It, it may be just there's, when you share the screen, there's two little uh, check boxes on the share screen mm -hmm. options when you're selecting which screen to share. There's, uh, so you just click share screen and then it, oh, ah. okay. Browser yeah. windows and whatnot. Then there's a little checkbox that says share computer sound. It's real easy to miss. It's at the very bottom. Okay. Host to start this meeting. Is that working? That means the yeah. host has not started Perfect. the meeting. Okay. Let me back up just a little bit here. Today we will be going over how to join a Zoom meeting. We've got a couple options, but we'll go through the first one via email invitation. Once you receive an email invitation for a Zoom meeting, you can quickly view the join link from the invitation. You can click this invitation and you will be prompted to either download or launch Zoom. If you see this message waiting for hosts to start this meeting, that means the host has not started the meeting on their side yet, 
and you can go through while you're waiting on them, test your computer audio, select your input levels, select your video, and go through and select your virtual backgrounds. Your second option is to directly join Zoom meetings from the Zoom application. You can view all your upcoming meetings under the Meetings tab and quickly select Join. If you have any questions on joining a meeting, please contact us at zoom.s. Thank you. So as succinct and uh, comprehensive as that was, she moves very quickly. Uh, which is why I kind of wanted to make sure everyone had access to that um, support page so you can reference those videos as many times as you need. Um, they, they have lots of good information in them, but they do move pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you can constantly reference those videos um, anytime you need to brush up on information or if it just wasn't clear the first time. Um, they did in that video cover how to test your microphone and test your speakers before you get started, um, which you'll be prompted to um, whenever you join a video. Um, it will have that big blue button that um, asks you to if you want to test your audio. And uh, if you get it set and you don't have if you don't have any other um, speaker or microphone options, then literally the speakers and microphones that your device has, then you're just good to go each time. Um, if you're someone like me, who when I joined the beginning of this meeting with Kathleen, it took me a couple seconds to get it to go because I have five different audio devices linked up to my computer that I use for various reasons. And sometimes they don't communicate with each other the way they should. Um, it's helpful to have that, that test um, audio and video function right at the start of your meeting so you can get it, you can make sure that it's all good to go before you join. And moving through here, um, anyone uh, can share their screen uh, like I was doing at the bottom of your, um, your Zoom video screen, your client screen, where it says um, the participant count, it has the chat function. Um, there's a big green share screen um, option right in the center. And when you click that, it opens up another smaller window and it will ask you um, if you want to share your entire screen, which um, has its advantages, um, or if you just want to share um, a single application, like if you were um, kind of like what I was doing where I was showing just a video or I was showing something on a web page, you can set it up so that your computer only focuses on one application at a time rather than your entire computer screen because that can get kind of cluttered and busy and hard to follow depending on how you, um, how you have it organized. Um, is there any, any relevant questions that we have coming up here, Kathleen? Is there anything that I can touch um, on while we're going? Yeah, we have um, one from Gracie about how do you add meetings to the list for Zoom? So I guess it'd be how to schedule a meeting. Is that? Uh, sure, sure. Asking. Well, how do you, you showed that list of linking immediately to the list of meetings oh. that were in the Zoom? Because mm -hmm. I right oh, now I'm going through email and doing the link, and if I could somehow connect them all automatically to Zoom and go only to Zoom to enter that, a meeting immediately. And that is something that I actually just before this was talking to Jim about that we couldn't figure out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not immediately obvious. I absolutely um, agree with you. Um, we I've been able to schedule meetings inside of the Zoom client. Um, it's in that kind of that landing page with the four big icons um, where you can start your own new meeting. Um, there is a schedule icon immediately beneath it that allows you to create your own meetings and schedule them. And then they populate inside of your uh, Zoom list. But let me poke around here just real quick and I can see if there is an option to link your account. Mm -hmm. So it may be more as a host. If you're a host, I, then it yeah. populates 
Right. I see. Right. I see. But okay. I agree, you should be able to pretty easily just take an invitation and have that be represented in your schedule. Um, mm -hmm. That would only make sense. Um, but so, hmm. oh, it's Kathy. Um, yeah, there at the bottom of my page under my all my meetings, which are bingo bingo meetings every week, mm -hmm. because I have those on my account. There is a um, at the very bottom of that it says save time by scheduling your meetings directly from your calendar, and it gives you a Microsoft Outlook plugin or a Chrome extension. So I bet ah. it's just. I bet it's just limited to those products. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, if you own, if you use Outlook or the Google um, account suite, you can link your calendars within those programs to Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, it appears so. I haven't yeah. tried it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, Joel and I before the before this program when we were chatting about that, um, we were kind of bringing up uh, how like how Zoom differs from say like Apple's FaceTime or Google Duo, where you can just, you know, video conference someone. And Zoom, uh, like one of the differences is that it works on all the different platforms. So it makes it a little bit more complicated because it can work on almost anything. And it also seems like one of the things that makes it a little more complicated is it's it was originally set up, it seems for, meeting for business meetings for work so there's a lot of integration with calendars and with email contacts and depending on how like what calendar you use and what email service you use it can kind of change the options um, so if you're if you're at work and you have your your google calendar and you have all your meetings in there then it makes sense but if you just use zoom to call your friend then it doesn't make as much sense but because it's meant for business it can get a kind of make make it a little bit more complicated than just like facetiming someone on an iphone so it's where a lot of those options come from it seems to me um there was another question about um about background options and you told us how to do it for background options click on the arrow when you when i click i don't have any how do i how do i get options there's another, um, there should, if you click on it, does choose virtual background come up? Yes. Okay, so yeah. click on I that. mean, there's, there's select a camera. I've got, uh, and then choose virtual background. And I don't yeah. have any. So, I have the same problem. Yeah. I th this might I th have something to do with what I was going to speak on briefly. And that besides the cosmetic part um, is make sure you have the most upgraded version of Zoom on your computer. I noticed that when I, when I upgraded um, the first time, I got a lot more virtual background options as well as a lot more um, bells and whistles. So to do that, you're, when you're in a Zoom meeting and you can go up and if you're on a computer or laptop, I'm not sure where it is on a tablet. And um, Joel, please correct me if I'm wrong, but if you click up on Zoom US, you will get a drop down menu and it will say check for updates. And if you click on that, um, it will tell you whether you're uh, ready for an update or not. So you can install that next version and see if you don't get virtual backgrounds that way. But they should be there. If you have them, they should be um, when it says choose virtual backgrounds. Um, you should have at least one or two, I would think. Oh, I don't have any either. No, and I, uh, it, I don't need an update. Mm. I, yeah, I don't have any either. And I don't, I just installed mine. Um, this is a new computer so a couple of days ago. So this is a good, this is a good mystery here. <laughs> yeah, I don't I mean, see any place to look for the update. And you can, there you must can, be a library of, of images that you can, place there yeah right yeah but you can have it but mine says none and there and i'm updated and i have a new computer and all of that you, you can go out like on the web and just zoom like um google zoom background and you know zoom background um gnome home or something like that and i've done that <laughs> and um find one then you can save it to your pictures 
And then um, if you hit choose virtual background and it pops up, um, there should be a little plus sign. Like with mine, I actually have virtual backgrounds, but if you have none, you can add image or video. If you click on that, you can pull one off of your computer. Um, like I've got, you know, I've got bingo balls. Oh, yeah, no, I. Movies. Just and, have those bowls. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, those there you bowls go. Are bowls. Yeah, th those were just literally off the internet, so. Okay, because I, I don't see how you can enter it on. When I press none, it's just none. And then they say, they ask you if you have a green screen and then they say mirror my video. So I have, <laughs> and I have no idea then how to get anything. If, if, not if we, uh, oh, sure. Hi, uh, Chris Ellis here. I, I use a virtual background nearly all the time and they're all from my um, library of my own photographs. How do so I get when you, when you pick on my, I'm using an Apple, uh, um, um, a Mac desktop. And so when I click on virtual backgrounds, starts off with none with black, a black screen and says none. Mm -hmm. So then you get what you see, my messy office. Or I, and there's a little plus sign over to the side, and then it <laughs> takes you to your photographs library and you choose whichever ones you want. And so you can say add image, I see here. Uh huh. Yeah. And it'll take you to your photo photography library and you choose however many pictures you want to add on there. And then at the beginning of a session, you go to a virtual backgrounds and wow. the pictures you've chosen should be there. How do you get, um, it only gives you a choice between documents and iCloud Drive and all my photographs are on desktop. Well, then you should be able to go to your desktop and click on one. How? <laughs> they don't give you a choice, just documents. Just documents. And iCloud Drive. Okay, I'll, I guess can, I'll I... do it through iCloud Drive. Okay, thank you. This is yeah. something also with the, the lack of the um, included ones. Like mm -hmm. I don't have them on mine either. Um, I can look into that and maybe put it in the chat while we're talking. Um, I just wanted to answer Shelly, how do you know which version you have? If, if you click up on zoom.us and then click on check for updates, a pop-up screen will say update available. And it's on mine, it says new version 5.5 and I have 5.4. So it will tell you when you click up on, on that update, check update screen. I did it, you guys, I'm in Rome. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Boy. Joel, Joel, do you? Uh, are you finished up with what you were saying, or do you do you want to meet? Do you want me to talk um, about iPad? Yeah, yeah. We, we can transition to some notes on how to do this on um, an iPad and mobile devices. Um, Jim's got a slideshow uh, ready to go about some of the basics of what a lot of what we just talked about, um, but how to do it on an iPad. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and so. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to select my browser with my slideshow. Can everyone see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Let me go back up to the top. Okay, so this is the beginning of the little slideshow here. And this might be a little basic. We've been, uh, it seems like uh, everyone here uh, knows the basics of creating an account since we're all here. So uh, I'm just gonna walk through this and uh, see if anyone has any questions and we may be able to kind of zoom through it, uh, pun intended, or we can uh, spend a little time on some of these nitty gritty details. So this is uh, for using Zoom on an iPad. So it's really similar to an iPhone also. Uh, you'll you know, go to your app store in this uh, left-hand slide here. 
uh, where you go to your app store icon and then you'll search for Zoom for iPad. Um, and, and one little thing to note is it calls it Zoom Cloud Meetings, which is kind of new to me. I didn't realize they called it that technically. Um, and then you have your Zoom app that's gonna download to your iPad and you'll find that icon and click on that. And uh, on an iPad, you can sign up or sign in uh, at the bottom of this next screen when you click on the, uh, the app icon. So if you sign up, you'll need to put your birthday in. So one little detail is you can't have an account on Zoom if you're under 16 years old. So is anyone here under 16? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that was a. I didn't know that was a, a thing. But I guess you can only have like an educational or school account. And so you put your birthday in, and then you it can type in your email address and your first name and your last name and create an account. Or uh, you can sign in with uh, your uh, with your Zoom email address and password, or you can sign in using your Google. Uh, email address and password, like for your Gmail, if you use Gmail, or you can sign in with your Facebook uh, uh, information if you want to do it that way. So I'm going to sign in. I, I use uh, Gmail to sign in. So I, that's the way I do it. And uh, you'll come to this meeting, this new meeting screen, this third uh, tile on the right of the slide. And so on an iPad, it looks like this. So this is a little different than the desktop version. And what I'm encouraging everyone to do uh, is, uh, and you may already do this, uh, but you can just make a, a blank meeting, make a meeting just with no one in it. And then you can just poke around, poke around on the screen, see what all the buttons do, um, click on things. You don't have to be scared to mess anything up, just really explore. And so you'll be just, if I were to click on this new meeting, um, it's going to have some options that I have to take care of first, but now walk us through that. But once you get into your meeting, you can just, you know, you're having a meeting with yourself and you can just explore the software. Uh, so on iPad, this is a, like a few Apple specific things that we'll go over. Um, you have to make sure your video is on and then you start, click start meeting. And then it'll, uh, on iPhone and iPad, it asks you for permissions to do a lot of things. So you have to click a lot of buttons to tell, that says, okay. Uh, so it, it wants to access your camera. You have to click, okay. It wants to access your microphone. You have to click, okay. Um, and in, on my iPad, it wasn't able to access the microphone. So I had to go into my settings and in my privacy settings, I, there's a, a toggle switch there where you allow Zoom to access your microphone. Yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, if you all are on the Zoom call, you've probably maybe already done this, or maybe you're using a desktop and you want to use an iPad or an iPhone in the future, but just uh, to let you know, well, I was actually, um, at the beginning of this meeting, I'm on a new computer, so I had never given it permission to, to for Zoom to share its screen. So I was testing out sharing the screen in preparation to do this, and all of the windows, when I click share screen, it was just a bunch of like exclamation points. So I had to go into my settings and give it permission to share the screen. So all, all those little settings are gonna be in your privacy uh, settings on your iPhone or your iPad. So just definitely something to be aware of. Um, and then you click uh, call using internet audio. Always kind of found this option a little confusing because you don't really think about what audio you're using, but you can, if you're just wanting to do a normal video, you click internet audio. And if you want to use your phone to uh, join a Zoom meeting, like, like if you were in the park and you didn't have Wi-Fi and you didn't want to use all your data, but you just wanted to hear the Zoom call, uh, like kind of like a phone call, um, then you would click dial in tap dial in and that would be good for um, if you were you know, joining a zoom call from your car like if you were driving or, or a passenger or something like that um, so then you would click join with video kind of a lot of steps 
And then you're finally into your own personal meeting. So I just started my own meeting and then I'm looking at myself and I can just tap around on the screen. And as you can see, um, the, the buttons, like on a desktop, the buttons are at the bottom and at the, on an iPad, the buttons are along the top. Um, so, but there are many of the same options. They just uh, are at the top instead of the bottom. And uh, I'll keep going here. And you, no one has any big questions. Um, this is uh, once you're in that meeting and you, and you create a meeting for yourself, uh, one way to invite people is to tap on that participants tab. And I'm sure this will work on a desktop as well, just at the bottom. Tap on the participants tab and then you can invite people straight from there. Um, that's one way to do it. There's several ways to do it, but this way kind of makes sense to me. You start your meeting. Hey, I'm in the meeting. I'm here. Now I want to invite other people. And then you can invite them with email or you can copy the link and maybe paste it into a text message and then text it to them. You'd have to get out of Zoom to do that and go text it to them. But and, um, and then when you email the link to someone or when you invite them via email, Margaret and I were testing this earlier today and she invited me uh, through email and my email looked like this. I got my Zoom meeting invitation from Margaret and I had to scroll all the way to the bottom. That's another thing that's interesting about Zoom to me is the meeting links are kind of at the bottom rather than the top. So you kind of have to go looking for them. And then you click open and it'll open up your Zoom app on your iPhone or your iPad, and then you're in business. And um, last, this is my last slide here. Um, uh, another way to, we were kind of touching on this a little bit before with the meetings list. Another way to start a meeting and invite people is to click on your meetings tab on the left on an iPad. And then you have the kind of those similar options. You can send an invitation or start the meeting straight from there whichever way you prefer to do it, I suppose. I kind of like the just starting a meeting and inviting people from within it. But. And then uh, Margaret on her iPhone, she had a few extra options there. So she had send message and send email and copy to clipboard. So it kind of tends to, to depend on, you know, what email service you use and what calendar service you use and how all your contacts are set up on your phone. So some people might have a little bit different buttons, but um, that's generally how you invite people on an iPad. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and uh, kick it back over to Joel or open it up for questions a little bit. Yeah, um, no, uh, it might also be a good time. We can transition to how to look glamorous with Kathy here um, All right. while we sift through some questions and if we have time at the end there we can get to questions or um if we run out of time we can definitely just make note of them and we can get back to everybody um in the future here oh, kathy i think you're you're, you're muted still there you go okay thank you um i'm going to talk about not really the you know how to be glamorous on Zoom, but certainly how to um, put literally put yourself in the best light. And I, I think that's important. Um, maybe not so much when you're attending a program like this and you're a face in the crowd and, and you're one of many and all you really intend to do is listen. But I think the more we use Zoom for our personal um, conversations, especially during this pandemic, when we may be talking to grandchildren or old friends or, um, you know, your maybe old classmates in a high school reunion. It is good to remember that you're there to see them and they're there to see you. And so just to be, to put yourself in the best light is a good thing in those instances. So I'm just gonna talk about two very basic things. One is lighting and one is camera angle. So um, for the lighting, I thought I would do a little demonstration and see if I can reach. I'm sitting in my bedroom and I'm gonna take off my background here so you can see what I'm working with. Um, the thing you, the, the ideal conditions are to have your light source in front of you. 
And the, the ideal light source is natural light or a window. And especially a window covered with an, a nice light sh white sheer is beautiful light. Most of us don't have that set up um, and we don't wanna go to the trouble in getting it. Um, so we have to deal with what we have. So in my case, I've got a big bright window um, to my left and then an otherwise dark room to my right. Now, here's the reason you don't want to put the window behind you. And I'm just going to going to turn off all my cheating lights. So if you have the window behind you, you can see what happens. Um, you suddenly become very, very dark. And who knows, that might just scare the bejesus out of your grandson someday. If you come on Zoom and, you know, hi, honey, you don't look very good. Um, so what you want to do is you want to turn your camera away from that light. I actually put my blind down and then try to build up the light in front of me. So I have a light that's just naturally over my desk here. It's this desk in our bedroom. Um, and then I use the brightness um, level on my monitor. And by doing that, you can just very easily add light, not only to the picture you see, but to the light that's reflected in your face. So as you can see, I'm just sitting on that, I'm just tapping my brightness button. And a lot of us have it on our keyboard and it looks like, like a little light bulb and a bright light bulb. So you can go back and forth and this is how you can throw more light in front of your face, right? You can also, if you have, um, oh, look at that. Sorry. Friends. What? Makes a difference. Yeah, it makes a big difference and you can really play with it. Then as you can see, if you really want to get sort of, you know, particular about it, um, you can put a little lamp, a small lamp or a uh, what they call an O light, which is just a light that um, people use for these kinds of things. And then you just fill in like that on one side. So you've got, so, but it doesn't have to be this, you know, balanced either. If you just think about light coming from the front, it really doesn't matter what your background is. Of course, I do like the virtual backgrounds when my, when my room is a mess, but um, that's something to keep in mind. The other important thing to keep in mind is camera angle. So ideally, you wanna have the lens of your camera. Now mine is right up here. I have a pretty big monitor. Um, I got it from my son. It must be a gamer monitor or something. It's huge, but my camera is pretty high up so I can tilt it up and down. Um, but ideally you want it to be at your eye level you don't want it to be down low so that you're looking up at your chin. Because if you've ever held a mirror down there, <laughs> I don't care who you are, but it's just not gonna be your best, <laughs> your best look, your best angle. So you wanna get your, your camera up. So if you have a laptop or an iPad, put a bunch of books under it until it kind of comes up you know, at eye level. And um, that will do wonders uh, for um, for the way you look. And also just make sure you're sort of shooting for the center of the screen. Um, again, people are on Zoom with you to see you and see your face and your, eye, your eyes and your expression. So just to give them, you know, your, just your natural look, see, try to get your head to fill up as much of the screen as you can. Um, and I think that was all I wanted to say. Yeah. That's it. So just lighting and a, and a good camera angle and you'll be great. So um, the other thing on the list is, um, oh, does, Chris, do you have a question? No, I've got a point of this cost $5 from Ikea. <laughs> it's fantastic. You can angle your iPad or your phone. And so you don't have a fast moving jerky picture going out. What and is just, that? It looks like a stand of some sort, right? Yeah, I can't get the picture to focus because it wants to focus on me. There you are. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's very simple. $5 from Ikea. Huh, that's cool. I'm sure you can find them on, online at 
Amazon as well. Um, one of the things on a few folks' list was um, how to do silly stuff for your grandkids, like put filters on. So if you go to um, the stop video icon and, and again, click on the little arrow to the right of it that's where you get your virtual background and then click on it says choose video filter. So if you click on that, you should get a bunch of options. So I can put like uh, rabbit ears on <laughs> that, or I can be a pig um, or a shark. Um, so you can do all sorts of wacky stuff if you uh, like to do that. There, Kathy is. I don't know. I can't like see that. Mouse. Uh -oh. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we so. did have a question. I don't. I didn't know if you saw it. Um, and this is something I, I. Although Peter has left, I think the room. But um, how to make sure when you go to share a screen, um, either Joel or Jim. How to when you go to share a screen? How to make sure that your audience sees what you want them to see, like your photos or your uh, presentation or whatever. Yeah. So when you when you hit that big green share screen button, before it does anything, it pops up a little uh, window in the center of your screen, and it asks. It gives a few options, and it asks if you want to share the entirety of the screen, um, and then if you have, say, a web browser and another application running at the same time, it will ask if you want to cast only one of those. So depending on, you know, if you've got a bunch of clutter on your desktop or you have a bunch of programs open at once, it may be a little too busy or distracting for you to share your entire screen. And you can just select one of those applications that you want to share. Um, and then it won't show anything else. And when you close that application, I think it should, it just closes um, the screen sharing and asks you to select a new source. Okay. And then if it's, and if it's something um, like earlier, the issue I ran into that Jim helped me with, um, like if you're wanting to share a video with sound or any kind of uh, material on your computer that's producing sound and you want the audience to hear that as well, um, before you click uh, share, after you select what source you want to share, you also at the bottom of that window that pops up, there are two little check boxes. One says, share sound and the other says optimize for video clip. And depending on what your desires are, you might want to select one of those boxes um, and then hit share. And then that will allow you to share your sound as well. I think it's fairly similar on iPad, Jim. Pat has a question. I um, put two images, the one in Rome and my Facebook profile a, a picture. And I wondered like Jim Barnes down at the bottom just has a photo. He's not live on there. How do I put the photo when I don't want to use my video? Um, good question. Um, so what you would have to do is um, in your, um, there's a handful of ways to do this, depending on the kind of device that you're on. We have to get to your profile and um, select a profile picture within Zoom. So have your Zoom account set up with a profile picture. And then essentially what that does is when anytime you're in a Zoom call and you um, stop sharing your video feed down there in the left next to your audio where you can mute yourself, um, instead of just showing the name of your account, it will also also show you um, the profile image for your account, which in Jim's case is his LPL uh, staff photo. Um, so depending on which device you're on, um, there's a uh, few I'm different on, ways. Um, my laptop and I um, moved the profile picture from Facebook into the same area where I put Rome. Is there any way of getting to it from, um, 
wrong with my head? I, I don't know how to even ask the question. <laughs> um, so let's, what you can do, um, okay. uh, we just need to get to your profile. See, it's behind me. Right, right. So we need to get to your profile settings and you can do that a few different ways. Um, we'll do it uh, similarly to how we got to change the virtual background and the video filters. If you hit one of those up arrows next to stop video or um, on the mute icon, yes. we just need to get to video settings or audio settings so that it displays your general settings window there. And then once you get to that window that has your backgrounds and filters, um, or if you clicked audio, it goes to your audio settings. On the left, there's a tab that says profile. And when you click on profile, it opens a window that says edit my profile. Now mine says under settings, general video, audio, share screen, background and filters, recording, statistics, feedback, keyboard, shortcuts and accessibility. It doesn't have hmm. um, profile. Well, I'm operating with a different version then. Me too, and I have a new computer. Mine is the same. Mine is the same as that. So I'm I'm looking around in my settings to see if I can find something, Joel. Okay. Yeah. Um. The other way you can do it is just by going to Zoom's web page and signing into your account, and you can upload a profile photo on there as well. And then the next time you launch a meeting, um, it will be updated with your profile image. And that's just going to zoom.us, I think, and logging in with your account information. I don't know if Jim's <laughs> got a, a, a quicker workaround there. It, it, is, it does get kind of confusing with the different windows uh, popping yeah. in and out. It, 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 it's not the most obvious sometimes. I do recommend everyone check uh, your set, check your um, check for updates. So when you when you're in a Zoom and you might do it um, even before you leave tonight, check for updates and um, it will it will tell you whether or not an update is available to you. And then you you just shoot, click on update and put in. You have to know your admin and your password. Um, and it will just pretty easily install the next version. And that may end up solving some of these issues because I just have found different issues with different versions, like this whole past year with different versions of Zoom. I think my, I think the, uh, I'm, I'm not signed in. So I clicked the, the email link that, Kat, that um, Kathleen sent but I never, I wasn't signed into my Zoom client on my mm -hmm. desktop. So when I, that may be why my settings don't show my account. Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm clicking, um, I'm on a Mac and I'm clicking a zoom.us in the top left-hand corner of the screen, like in the menu. Um, and then at the bottom of that menu, there is sign in. And so maybe, once you sign in, it'll allow you to change your profile picture and things like that. Yeah, it's like it has to be, it has to recognize you. Yeah, and, and so if someone was already signed in on their Zoom and then they accepted the meeting invitation from their email, they're already signed in, but I wasn't and I accepted it. So either way it works, but you don't really realize that you're not signed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the difference it's gotta be. Any other questions out there? We're right about five o'clock or a couple minutes after. I've always been curious about the option to mirror my video. Uh, should we do that or not? It's a choice. As far as I know, and I've experimented with that, it's a choice in how you see yourself. Not It does not impact how others see you. It, it, it impacts it impacts if you have writing on your shirt or something like that it can be 
it'll be seen as a mirror image or not as a Im mirror image. So people can read. Otherwise, oh. it, it shows up backwards. backwards. I, I think it does impact how people see it. Okay. Your... Yeah. Okay, well, I was trying with a girlfriend the other night. I was sitting like this and I was going back and forth and she didn't see any difference because it would have switched, you know, from this, side to side. Well, the clock so behind you me is on the other side. Now, now I am touching oh. the left side of my face in real time, but to you, it looks like the right side, right? Yeah. Correct. So yeah. I checked Correct. mirror my video. So I think it's a little weird, Yeah, <laughs> actually. I guess um, it just brings up a good point of don't be afraid to kind of experiment and click around and see what different buttons do. I mean, it, nothing's going to yeah. explode or anything like that. You can't mess it up. Yeah, I think I think Jim made a similar point when he started his slideshow, like just opening a meeting and just poking around. Right. That's that's one of the best ways to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, upon leaving Zoom meetings, sometimes I will. It will, Zoom will ask me if I have a Zoom client downloaded and I'm like, I don't know whether I do or not. And I try to go to the Zoom um, uh, site and ask them, what, what did you mean by that? And nothing will come up and they don't seem to know what I'm talking about or in the, in the, uh, you know, the, the frequently asked questions. So what's going on there? I mean, I was just in the meeting, so I must have something downloaded. Yeah, so Zoom has its own standalone, they call it the client. It's just, it's, it's the same as like an app that you would download onto your computer or your device. So whenever you are actually in a Zoom meeting, it requires that client in order to operate the meeting and the meeting interface. So um, it, it might, when you try to launch a meeting or you accept an invite from a meeting and you try to actually enter that meeting, it will, you'll be on the web page and it will say, click here to launch the Zoom client. And if you don't have it, click here to download. I think, is, is that what I'm, no, I actually am, have just ended and left a meeting and then, you know, the little Zoom uh, window comes up after at the end of the meeting to show I've left and then it will ask me, did you have such and such downloaded? And I'm like, uh, hmm. I didn't know whether it was an update. It didn't make it clear that it was an update. And it didn't make it clear whether it was if they were offering me, uh, you know, an upgrade, a paid upgrade or, or what it was. Hmm. They were just asking me if I had it. <laughs> I just put a link in the chat to, to their downloads page. So uh, when in doubt, you could just try to download it for your platform and see if that cleared up that problem. Okay. I'm still searching for why we don't have virtual backgrounds by default. So have no fear, I'm on it back here, but we might need to wrap up pretty soon, I imagine, but um, we could email everyone that answer if I could find it. Jim, yeah, we'll it, it seemed like when you started to select backgrounds, which I'll have to figure out the photos and everything, that it seems to store some on that, on that area of the page. I, yeah, right. Does that mean that each time you go on that you select a particular virtual background? If you want to. Yeah, if you want to. Or, or is there a default? If you only put on one, then that's it, right? It, it will be, it'll bring up the one that was on the last time you were on Zoom. So I like, see. take this one off. Next time I come on, it'll still be on. I see. Yeah. Thank you. So. All well, I know is that I can now get a funny headband and a beret the way my <laughs> grandchildren. You know, you don't need do. to know anything else but that. Just, you know, and I'm a happy camper. You've just made my day, Jim and Joel. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Happy well, to do it. We will put together kind of a little follow up sheet with the links to. Oh, thank God support um, and a link to the recording so you can study up and um, other instructions for, you know, getting your virtual backgrounds and that sort of thing. 
Um, I know this was, it's kind of difficult to learn in this kind of setting because everybody again has different questions and needs, but thank you for being so patient and working with us. And like I said, this is a big experiment and um, we'll just kind of keep rolling. And over time, we're all gonna become Zoom experts. I just predict it. It's really nothing other than um, you know, trying and having some experience with it. So Thank you. I have a question and you were waving your hand. Nope. Okay. Okay. I think Maggie was saying goodbye. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, let's fantastic. Goodbye. Thank you. Let's give Thank our you. instructors Thank a big you. round Thank of applause. You. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it. Yay, and, guys. Uh, Thank you. Great Jim. meeting. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate see it. Yeah. Have a good bye afternoon. Bye. bye, everyone. Care.